welcome to Lemons and Larkspur. Today's video is another cottage garden tour, this time the first one for May. I cannot believe we are already into May. I am so excited to share how the perennial garden is coming along. I've made some mistakes that I'm going to share with you. I have some holes that I need to fill, some moving that I need to do, but I think that you are really going to enjoy today's video. I'm going to be I'm going to try to be much better at explaining, um, not explaining, but at least naming um, what I am talking about. I realized in the last video, I kind of had an assumption attitude and you should never do that as a gardener because I grow things here in California that maybe you don't grow in Minnesota or Georgia or wherever you are and I should name them. So once again, we are in zone 9B. This is the first perennial cottage tour uh, for 2023. I think that's it. Um, if you haven't subscribed, I'd love to, love to have you subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button. Tell me what is blooming most profusely where you are. I can tell you what's just about to come on here. The roses are all butted up. Um, the foxglove looks really pretty right now, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want you to see that on your own. So, Let's get to gardening. We are going to start where we always start in my little patch of shade garden. This is really the only true shade that I have in our entire backyard. And it is a first year garden, so I've learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes, this first succulent actually I think just fell there and started growing. This big tall plant in the front is Gara and I think number one it wants more sun and number two obviously it's too large for the front. That will be moved probably this week. The Jupiter's beard I'm going to give one year to and that is that pink spiky flower in the front. What is doing well back here is the hellebore. I have three of them here and I have lamb's ear, which seems to be happy in this spot as well. And then I have a brand new hydrangea that was almost dead and I think is going to make it. So that is the shade garden. This second section here has been one that has been so hard to plant, mainly because I inherited these nice big boxwoods and these gorgeous pine trees. So number one, there's a ton of roots in here, very hard soil, and it is on the acidic side because of the pines. So what I have in here so far is mostly annuals in pansies. I put my blueberries in here, which seem to be doing well. What I need is just maybe one um, good perennial that can replace this area where the pansies are. That is what I'm on the lookout for that this month. That's one of my projects. The little barrel of succulents seems to love it tucked in here and that is a good fix. Stick a pot where you can't dig a hole. The status loves it in here. These little white daisies, they won't last much longer. They are free seeding, come up for me everywhere in the garden, but they are a cool season annual and they will be gone pretty soon, which is kind of bittersweet. This purple Namisha in the front here is loving the warm up in the heat. And I actually have Bells of Ireland coming up from seed. First time I've been successful with them and I am so excited to see what they bring to the garden. Here's that other stand of Gara, like the one that I said I needed to move from the shade garden planted at the same time and obviously much larger. I do have this one spot in here um, that doesn't have anything and I think I'm going to move it here and just make it like a stand 
of the three. I think it'll be pretty. And you can see I did replace that boxwood that was not doing well with a new one. So it grows pretty quickly. It should catch up soon. This is annual status, which for us here is a perennial in zone 9B. It is gorgeous. And you can see my new David Austin roses are putting on blooms, so I'm so excited. And the pink salvia, I have three of those back here. Um, they are putting on a show. This stand of Coreopsis in the front, and that's that tall flower, is so much bigger than it was last year. I'm not too worried about this border because the things that are in the back, like the boxwood, like the roses, they will eventually get three, four feet high and it will make a little more sense. I'm going to be patient for once with this Coreopsis and some of the larger plants in the front. The yarrow, that little white flower is a bit invasive. So again, I'll keep an eye on it. Right now it's crowding out the weeds, so I'm okay with it, but we shall see how it goes. This little stand of daisies, the, the Gerber daisies, they have been here for two years now and they're finally getting some stem length on them so I'm really excited about that. And this is a mallow plant, it's a new hybrid mallow. Um, I pulled this out from the back and somehow it escaped me. So again, I'm gonna leave it for now and maybe just keep it trimmed down so that it doesn't overpower things in the back because I think it can get quite large but it's another wait and see. That's the thing with early gardens. You do have to give things time to figure out height and just be patient. This um, stand of Dianthus, which is all the pink flowers, loves it here, as does the Santa Barbara daisy, which are those little tiny daisies in the front. I have big plans for those in so many places in the garden because they have been flourishing. And the Scabiosa, these are new. They will get larger. They are perennial. Um, I do like them and I hope that they, they can hold their own in the space that I've given them. And that is my new second David Austin for this year. And I have a couple of purple salvias in here to kind of balance the pink salvias on the other side. They will get quite large. That's that little green plant in the back there. Um, it will get quite large and it will fill out that space nicely. Lavender in the rock crevices is also working well. I'm going to add more of that this year. The black eyed Susans have gotten quite large and I'm so excited about them also. I am going to say the word excited a lot in this tour. This is how Black Eyed Susan started last year. I put a couple of new plants in and those in the back are one year later. That's more of that Santa Barbara Daisy. It just loves any little nook that you, you put it in. So like I said, you will be seeing more of it. And take a look at my artichoke plant. I think I have an artichoke growing on it. I'm I'm not gonna say the word excited. I am looking forward to it. Grapevine is doing well, second year for it as well. I have 
have Shasta Daisy in here as second year. Didn't get much from it last year, but I am hopeful this year it will um, really take off for me. And you can see a few hollyhocks have reseeded. The ranunculus has finished um, its season and I have an area in here that probably will fit three perennials. I want something that gets about two feet tall and I think yellow would be beautiful. So if you can think of anything, let me know and I will research it because I really want to put the right perennial in there. And the foxglove are looking beautiful this year as are the iceberg roses. They are kind of a workhorse rose. They don't get much um, fanfare because they are not spectacularly showy, but they bloom and bloom and bloom and their foliage is beautiful. back there. I was worried it was not going to get enough sun, but I think it's going to be fine. The verbena along the front, this is the second year for it. It just keeps blooming for me and look at those gorgeous columbine. I put those in I think like November. I think there's four of them in here. And look at my Shasta daisies. I want you to see the progress on them. I don't really know what's gonna to happen to them this year. I'm just excited the gophers haven't gotten them yet. This rose here is a Tamra, David Austin, tucked underneath the privet. Trimming back the privet is on my list for May. I, my list for May keeps getting longer and longer. Santa Barbara Daisy down here um, because it grows anywhere it seems and to kind of hold up the hillside. I did cut back this petunia. It was getting very very leggy. It seems to bounce back really well so hopefully it will again. And my little stand of sweet peas. I hope they bloom before the sun gets too hot. My fingers are crossed. I never mention or show these um, little barrels of roses that I have on the patio. I have four different roses mixed with different perennials in each um, bucket. And so far they seem to be doing really well. This one is a yellow rose with a purple salvia. I also tucked in a little bit of that pink jasmine and it has just decided it likes it there and I'm trying to train it up the post. And you can see the whiskey barrels are doing so well. I may have to replace the pansies when it gets a little warmer. Uh, we'll just wait and see. Right now they are looking beautiful. Here 
is another rose and some petunias. I believe there's also a salvia in here as well. tomatoes are doing in this raised bed planter. We had a little heat wave and it was just what they needed um, to set fruit and to just really put on some growth. The strawberries look beautiful. I did have a little slug issue or roly-poly issue or something and I did have to bait with some sluggo and it seems to have done the trick. Just gonna really keep an eye on it and there is my thug of cat mint. I do not know what I'm going to do with it. Um, obviously, I'm gonna to have to do something. But for now, it's green and pretty. You can see the onions uh, that I rimmed the barrel with. They seem to be doing well. Again, it's something that I put in late. We're gonna be fighting um, the high temps with it to get a good harvest before um, it gets too warm. My little patio area here, I still love it. Here's more of that red salvia. Hummingbirds go crazy for this. pot of chili and flowers doing well. Finally getting some blooms on these uh, Iceland poppies. I had something eating them so I moved them there and they seem to be fine. Here's that little um, basket of flowers that I made. The Little daisies in the back are just about done. Those are those daisies that reseed for me. I have plans for this area here that I will be sharing with you in May. We're going to revamp and refresh this whole area here. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but I'll be sharing that. I also have dirt and soil in the back, so I don't know. I may try planting something back there. We'll see. Pink jasmine is done. The rosemary is doing well back there. And look at the cutting garden. This probably has been my biggest learning curve this year. Um, number one, I probably overseeded it. Number two, I didn't give it the proper support that it needs. So that's part of gardening. You learn as you go. more of that little white uh, it's actually a chrysanthemum it looks like a little daisy herbs are doing well that is lemon balm another bit of a thug but I'm it's in a pot so it's okay there's also some sage in there the lavender has just about bloomed out of four of these rose barrels that I planted. A 
Look at this rose. It is a climbing Eden and was bare root last year. This year it has just taken out, taken off. It is loaded with blooms. So excited about it. to the potted annuals. Um, they are still looking rather beautiful. I will have to be changing out um, some of the pansies and trimming back the petunias so they will go through a period where they're not as beautiful but they always bounce back. A spot in the middle here. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe I can squeeze something in there. We'll see. My list for May is already very long. Don't those pink geraniums look gorgeous? And this little pink china doll rose I brought with me from our old house. These are poppies and they are just spectacular. ranunculus out there were a few that were ready to bloom and I didn't have the heart to cut them um, so the front is looking a little bare but there are seeds in there so have no fear I'm not sure what this is I thought it was a hollyhock but that does not look like a hollyhock bloom it may have been from seed I don't know Poppies everywhere, and look at that gorgeous rose. Again, so many mistakes made. I'm going to have to figure out how my roses get more of the show next year, but I don't have the heart to cut anything back just yet. That is Sweet William. Tucked back in there. Lavender, of course. Another thing that grew for me from seed this year was Love and Mist. It's not in bloom yet, but I do see the leaves coming up, and that is one of my favorite annual flowers, so I will share that with you as soon as it blooms. The orange flowers in front are Calendula. There are some pansies in there. So that is the full perennial garden tour for May, the first week here. I will bring you the vegetable bed later in the week. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I, I hope you're inspired to plant a few more flowers. Um, they provide a very different kind of nourishment from the vegetables, but I would say equally as important. Thank you again for stopping by, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.